Welcome back, folks. <clears throat> One more thing I want to talk to you about um, is piston speed. Or you hear a lot of guys, they'll say, you know, what? how do I know where my engine red lines? How do I know how high I can rev this thing? Well, there's quite a few factors that kind of come into play when you start talking about the red line of an engine or how, how high the RPMs can go before you start hurting the engine. One of the big factors that we have to consider though is piston speed. And, and what we can do is we calculate how fast the piston is traveling in the cylinder. The longer the stroke of the crank, uh, the higher the piston speed is going to be. Also, the piston speed is going to vary. It's going to be faster or slower in different areas of, of, the, of the cylinder or different portions of the stroke. There's going to be uh, times where the piston is actually traveling faster than others. Reason for that is depending on the stroke of the engine and the length of the rod. I've got a real long stroker connecting rod here and a stroker piston that we're doing. So what you have going on here in your cylinder depending on your rod length and your your stroke length combination is the connecting rod as it is running from top dead center to bottom dead center what it's doing is the what happens is the piston comes up to top dead center and it stops when it stops up here at top dead center the connecting rod crosses over the center line of the crankshaft. During this period where the connecting rod is crossing over the center line, it's coming up to top dead center, the crankshaft is crossing over and then it starts back down. There's an area right in here at top dead center where the piston actually stops and sits here for a period of time. This is called my dwell time. Dwell time is changed depending on what how long of a stroke I have and it can also change based on how long of a connecting rod or whether I have a, a longer rod or a shorter rod in there so depending on how the engine is being built this can vary now the the formula that we use to calculate piston speed is we take a given RPM you target whatever RPM you want and you say, hey, I want to run 7,000 RPMs with this engine. Is it safe to do that? So what you do is you take 7,000 and you multiply it by the length of the stroke. Again, the stroke is how far the piston travels from top dead center to bottom dead center or vice versa. We multiply the RPM, your target RPM, by the stroke length. And then we get a number and we divide that by 6. The answer you're going to get is piston speed in feet per minute. Now, for a street engine, and I didn't really write it down here, but I will, we really don't want to see a piston speed of more than 4,000 feet per minute. That's a safe speed for a mildly modified engine. So whatever RPM your engine hits around 4,000 RPMs. Now you can go higher than 4,000 feet per minute, rather, um, but you're going to have to do a lot of reliability mods. You're going to have to really beef up uh, the internal components of that engine so they can handle it. So if we take this equation and we plug some numbers in here, let's say uh, first of all we plug in a three inch stroke. So we have uh, a three inch stroke here and we say three times 7,000. We want to turn 7,000. So we say three times 7,000 we multiply that, we get 21,000, we divide it by 6, we get 3,500, and that's feet per minute. So that means at 7,000 RPMs, an engine with a 3-inch stroke, which would be like a 302 Ford, it has a piston speed of 3,500 feet per minute. So we can see from that that 7,000 RPMs is actually safe for a 302, as long as the, the induction system and the camshafts will support that kind of RPM. It's safe to do that without, you know, causing the thing to fly apart. We bump that up to a 351 engine, 350, 351, which has right around a three and a half inch stroke. So you take three and a half times 7,000, 
and we get 24,500. We divide that by six and we come out with a piston speed of 4,083. So with a three and a half inch stroke, uh, 7,000 is really pushed. That's kind of your red line. You're like really pushing the motor right there. Unless you build a race motor that's designed to go much higher than that. So we really wouldn't want to turn a 350 Chevy or a 351 Windsor any more than 7,000. Now let's look at our stroker motor, which has a 3.750 stroke. So we take 3.750 times 7,000 and we get 26,250 divided by 6 and our piston speed is 4,375 feet per minute. So you can see we have three different engines here all turning 7,000 RPMs but because of the longer stroke in these the piston has further to travel so it has to go faster to cover the uh, to make 7,000 RPMs it's just it's kind of common sense but that, so uh, piston speed is definitely something that you should consider when you want to know hey what's the what's the max RPM of my engine stroke in inches times RPM divided by six and try to keep that below 4,000 and you'll be safe <clears throat> the other thing is is the the piston speed changes depending on the length of this rod like I said and the stroke so one of the other factors to consider is where is this piston accelerating the fastest? Depending on how long this rod is or what stroke I have and how far this rod sways, there's going to be certain times, especially near the top and the bottom of the stroke down here, where the piston is going to be going much slower. Usually the piston will be accelerating more in the center of the bore because when it comes up, this rod sways over. As this rod sways over to one side or the other, that's going to cause this thing to move quick but as this comes up it's going to slow because the crankshaft arm has to cross over here it actually stops for a period of time and then starts up again and once it gets moving uh, it'll kind of be slow up in this in area this area will be moving slower and when it gets down to about here then the piston actually speeds up so that 3500 feet per minute or that 4000 feet per minute that's an average speed from top to bottom. That doesn't mean the piston's always going that speed. The piston is actually stopping and starting. Now the reason we want to take into consideration piston speed is because at a certain point my piston's coming up. If I twist this engine too high in RPM, normally the piston will stop up here at top dead center, change directions and go the other way. If I go beyond the physical limitations of my piston and connecting rod and internals, the piston's not going to stop. <laughs> it's going to keep trying to go through the head or out through the oil pan. So if you over rev the engine, and of course the other factors in, in an engine's ability to turn RPMs is do the cylinder heads and camshaft combination have enough capacity, enough flow capacity? Does the cam have enough RPM capacity to support 7,000 RPMs? And most stock engines, the answer is no, it doesn't good example is a 327 Chevy. A 327 Chevy has a real short stroke and a big bore, kind of like a 302. A 327 Chevy, if you beef it up a little bit and put a big cam in it, it will turn 8,000 RPMs all day long without too much trouble because it has a really short stroke. <clears throat> um, however, the factory cylinder heads and the stock type camshaft and so forth, uh, limit that engine and its ability to actually turn that RPM. It's, you're not going to be able to twist it up there because the cam just, the valves will start floating, the springs are not stiff enough for that kind of an RPM and so forth. So when we beef those engine up, engines up or you know build them, we add in parts like bigger valve springs, bigger camshafts, better flowing heads and so forth that can actually support that kind of RPM. We can go ahead and twist it up there and because it's a short stroke, my piston speed is not real high, so I can twist it up there safely. So that's just kind of a breakdown of, of RPM redline capability of an engine. It is definitely highly dependent on how much stroke you're running. Uh, long stroke motors have a tendency to make more low to mid range torque. Short stroke engines will usually make 
uh, less torque but higher horsepower because of the high, higher RPM capability. So that's it in a nutshell. Another thing, just a little tidbit for you to consider and I hope it helps until next time. Be sure you subscribe below to My Vintage Iron 7512 and we'll see you soon.